The following is a presentation of God Questions Ministries. What does it mean to be chastened? How does God chasten us? Hebrews 12, verse 6 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. Another word for chasten is discipline. The passage goes on to quote Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12, which says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, as a father the son he delights in. Proper discipline is a proof of love. Throughout Scripture, God portrays himself as a father. Those who have received Jesus as Savior are his children. He uses the analogy of father-son, because we understand it. He compares himself to a loving father, who not only blesses, but disciplines his beloved children for their own good. Hebrews chapter 12 goes on to show that those who do not receive God's discipline are not legitimate children. Verse 8. A loving father carefully watches his son, and when his son defies his orders and heads for danger, the father disciplines him to keep him safe. God does that with us. When a born-again child of God heads for sin or refuses to resist temptation, our Heavenly Father brings chastening into his life to direct him back to holiness. Chastening can come in the form of guilty feelings, unpleasant circumstances, loss of peace, relationship fractures, or any number of negative consequences for choosing sin. Sometimes, the chastening of the Lord can be physical illness or even death. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 30. Often, people ask if God is punishing them for wrong choices in the past. All our punishment for sin was exhausted upon Jesus on the cross. The wrath of God was poured out on Him, so that for those who are in Christ Jesus, no wrath remains. When we give our lives to Christ, our substitute for sin, our sin is forgiven, and God remembers it no more. However, often our wrong choices in the past have brought about unpleasant consequences now. God does not necessarily remove the natural consequences of sin when we repent. Those consequences are tools God can use to teach us, to prevent us from repeating the same mistakes, and to remind us of His grace. Examples of chastening are found throughout the Bible. The Israelites were continually disobeying God's commands. He was patient with them, sent prophets to plead with them, and He warned them many times. But when they dug in their heels and embraced idols or evil practices, God brought chastening upon them in the form of plagues or enemy attacks. He still loved them, and in His love He could not allow them to continue in behavior that would destroy them. There are many examples of personal chastening in the Bible as well, even upon those in whom the Lord most delighted, Moses, David, and Solomon, to name a few. Notice that although these men made mistakes and were chastened for them, God did not stop loving or using them. He brought discipline appropriate to the crime, but always forgave the truly repentant heart. God always restored the relationship. When we sin, we can expect that our loving Heavenly Father will not let us get away with it. Because He loves us, He desires us to live holy lives. If someone professes to know Christ, but is living a lifestyle of unrepentant sin, and claims to feel fine about it, with no qualms, then that person is not a legitimate child of God. God punishes everyone He accepts as a son. Hebrews 12, verse 6. God Questions Ministry seeks to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by providing biblical answers to today's questions online at gotquestions.org.